Quilters. I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilt Creative Specialist. And I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilt Cutting Expert. And we're here to introduce you to our Go Carpenter's Wheel Die and show you how to use it to make the beautiful Go Tumbling Stars Throw Quilt, which is behind us. That's right. The Go Carpenter's Wheel is a bob or a block on board die that's designed to help you make this amazing 18 inch finished block. 18 inch. It's huge. Cutting in, in just one pass through a go or a go bake cutter. All right, quilters, just take a look at this die. There are so many there pieces. Are so many. I wouldn't want to cut these by hand. And to help you along, we've screen printed letters on the die to help you keep track of the pieces. And we also have specialized dog ears so that everything lines up perfectly perfectly now this is a classic block it dates back to the 1800s and it's been known by different names like the carpenter star the star of bethlehem double star and more it's a longtime favorite that's extremely popular pairing it with today's fabrics makes a look that's fresh and modern and i love it so let's get started erica and cut out a block oh well, okay now there are detailed cutting instructions available on the die package, as well as the patterns direction sheets available online. There's even a reference sheet that you can download for free with a coloring page to help you plan your block and keep track of your pieces. That's right. So we're gonna show you how to lay out the fabric and then we're gonna cut the pieces. And then Erica, we're gonna show them how to lay out the pieces yes. to create that tumbling stars throw quilt. Um, important thing to know about this, all the fabric needs to face up. Yes. Because we're creating a left side and a right side mm -hmm. that are mirrored images. Right? That's right. All right, so here is shape A. Look at all of these beautiful Look at shape all A's. Of those beautiful I shape just, A's. Just love them. Okay, so um, we only need two for our block today. So um, I'm going to cover up all the other fabric and then I just have the red here for the two for the center. Okay. So remember, quilters, mm -hmm. you want that lengthwise grain nice and tight. Remember, you can always cut six layers of good cotton mm -hmm. with our. Um, dies, but today we're just going to cut a few layers. Now, shapes B, D, and C all need to be cut in white, and then shapes B need to be cut in this gray color, okay. the light gray. So what I did, Erica, was I just cut a whole big piece, right? Okay. And then what I'm going to do is before I lay down that big piece, I'm just going to cover my shape Perfect. B's, okay? So I just found time-wise it was just easier to measure, cut, and so, okay. Right. So you're going to need a 10 by 24 die mat to go with this because yep. it's on a 10 by 24 cutting mat. You want to cut right. that for me? And remember, you could use our go or our go big to cut yes. this. Even our studio cutter with the appropriate adapter. That's right. Now, remember, quilters, you want to get started by making a test block first, yes. right? And be sure to follow the directions. So this actually is my test block yes. that we had here in the studio that I made. And look, this is the first one I did. Look how perfectly it turned out. It turned out great. And Erica, they don't have to make a whole block. They could probably just make one corner of it and they'd be ready right. to go. You just want to get the hang of it and how those pieces go together. Yep. All right, okay. so we're going to get rid of our mat. Slide, don't lift. That. Here we go, and we're gonna do the same below, and we're not gonna take any of the shapes off the die just yet. Right. So shape A is pretty obvious. Right. Um, this is shape D, and they're much smaller half square triangles, but you wanna keep track of B and C. That's right. Because these are half square triangles, and these are quarter square triangles, so the grain is different. Yes, that's right. Right? So you want to make sure you're always cutting on that lengthwise grain. There's one of my gray ones. There I was is looking a gray for one. Him. I was looking for him. So I'm just going to separate these out, and then I'm going to do this real high-tech way of keeping track of America. A sticky note? A sticky note. A sticky note. Yep, that's what we want. What would we do without them? Yeah, and remember quilters, you want all your fabric facing up because this is a directional die. That's right. And I'm missing one right there, I found him. Yep, there he is. There he is, okay. So I am gonna take my little sticky note and this is shape B, all right? And I'm gonna put them right here so I remember that those are Bs. All right, and then here's the D. Yep. Perfect, and then here is shape C. All right, 
And I'm gonna put a sticky note right here. Yep, it never hurts. It just, it just is gonna help, yeah. All right, and then we just need two of these for each of the blocks, so we just cut those. Now, okay. I also want to separate them, Erica, by gradient, right? Okay. Because yes. we have some darks and some mediums and some lights. Now, we want to lay out our block so that you can use it like a road map to follow while you're doing our sewing. Right. So you'll see that there, we're, what we're essentially doing is making a four patch. Okay, you just have to keep track of those pieces and sew them in order. And we've got, within each one of those, we've got mirror images. Okay. All right, so Erica, before we lay out a block, let's pull out the pattern that's on the that's back right. of the packaging. That's right, so See, we, we weren't kidding. We've got it right here and we're gonna use it so that we make sure we show you the right directions. Correct. <laughs> All right, so um, we're gonna start here with this shape A, which is the yep. red, right? Right. Okay. And now these are shape Those B's. Those are shape B's. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. So I'm going to give you some, and I'm going to take a couple. Okay. So we'll do them backwards. We'll just okay. build it backwards. Right. Okay. And then here's another shape E, or a shape A. Another sorry. shape A. Now that's going to be this medium right. tone. And you're going to have the dark tone. That's how we create those tumbling blocks. Oh, okay. All right. So on this side, there's the dark. Okay. All right. And then here is this shape B. Remember? That's right. That's so I'll right. I'll give you one there. Okay. All right. And make sure you're placing them out. And then, Erica, what's this last shape? That's going to be shape B again. Right. Okay. All right. So now on this block, we're going to start down here. Perfect. There we go. Yep. So we're going to start down here and finish laying out the pieces right. for this. So, so which shape is this? This one is going to be, wait, this is going to be a C. It is. Yep. Then we're going to have another one of our A's. Yep. Okay. And then on the corner, that's going to be that D, that right. smaller shape. That tiny. And I really want to point out to our quilters, look, these have specialized dog ears. So every time you every lay time. these shapes together, mm -hmm. from here to here is that perfect quarter inch yep. seam. That's how the, this quilt goes together so perfectly. All right. Now for this, we're going to need our dark gray. Yes. Then we're going to have our C up there. Yep. And then on the side, then we've got another one of the... Shape D's. Shape D's. And the way that I kind of remembered it, Erica, was, you know, the D's are going to go together, the C's yes. are going to go together, and so forth, okay? So, show, why don't we start by just sewing this little row together, okay. and then um, I'll let you press it out, and we can show quilters All right, how we can easy do that. it is. All right. So, I'm going to give you the iron. And now, at this point, you know, if you were going to be chain piecing, you're going to want to so, probably use... What, Pam? Some pins, right? Yes. I knew just you were going to say that. Just to make track, just to keep track of those. Well, and you want to make sure you sew it to the correct side. Well, that is true, too. Yeah. That is true, so too. So I'm going to point, pin it here, and I'm actually going to pin these two little pieces together. Because, again, you want to make sure you're pinning right sides together. That we're going the right sides, yep. Yeah. And this was, for me, a really great chain piecing block because they did all the left sides. Yes. And then I'm going to do all the all right sides. All the right sides. sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to start here with this. Perfect. Make sure you have my, I don't want to knock over your iron <laughs> there. Don't knock over my iron. This is such a great process. And really, you'll see in the pattern, too, that there are mirror images. So keep in mind that we're creating those mirror images. All right. Now, would you like me to press these open? Yep, or? I'm going to grab my scissors. So, Erica, what I ended up doing was, um, you're going to notice that it's going to kind of go in a natural um, pressing. Like, it's going to go this direction. And I kind of went all one direction okay. and all the other direction. So, however you would like to press that. Okay. So, so again, I'm going to lay it back down here so I We're make sure that I'm doing it right. lay this here. Yep. I'm going to bring these two pieces together. Okay. And I'm going to pin it. I know, I, it's really important to pin. <laughs> when I was you know, at home making easy. this. The reason that it's important to pin with this, I think, is so that you keep your pieces in the right place. Yes. Not that it's hard to line them up, because it isn't. And with those dog ears, they do line up, and your points are going to be perfect. Trust me on that. Yes. You know, and part of doing a test block is going to be testing that quarter inch seam allowance to quilters. Right. You always want to test that, and it'll make a difference with your fabric, your thread, how you're pressing, all those things. There you go, my friend. All right, so while I get this pressed out, 
Then the next part, oh, we need to put one piece on the end, don't yes, we? Yes, we need one little piece on the end. And then we can start on our corner right. of the block. There you go. And again, it's so important to keep track of shape B and C because yep. they are different. Well, and a, it's a good tip too because your dog ears won't fit together the way they should. Right. But you, it's just easier to keep track of them from the beginning. And again, Erica, when I sewed my block, I just did four sections yep. and chain pieced. Yep. Yeah. Laid them all out. And well, and, and that coloring sheet really helped. Yes. This is one case where that's really going to help, especially depending on the, how you are wanting your fabrics laid out. Right. Boy, we have so many strings. All right. If you want to okay, press that open. Okay, I'm going to press open. that, and then why don't you talk about these right. two corner units. So here's the next step. And listen, quilters, it's really important that you follow the pattern. Because what it's going to do is it's going to tell you to sew these two pieces together and then add this to the end. So basically, you're going to start, sew these two pieces together, add the end, okay? And then it's going to make this unit, okay? Then, I'm going to keep my pieces here, Erica, so keep I, know, your pieces. I know what everything is. That's right. And then you're going to create this corner pieces. This is how we don't have any Y seams. Right. Right? So you're going to start by taking the shape A and adding this little shape D mm -hmm. to it. Exactly. Right? So it's going to create this piece. Yep. And then... And this was really important to remember. You want it to have a flat edge. So yes. watch the piecing. Because I did one like this one time and, and that, that was work. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> that was wrong. It was wrong. Okay. All right. So now that we have all of those shapes sewn together, let's show you how easy it is to sew the block. Okay. All right. So Perfect. you get here with the iron. I'm good here. I'm good here. All right. So we're going to sew these two sections together. Correct. Now. Yep. And they're going to go together perfectly because we have those beautiful quarter inch seams and those beautiful dog ears. That's right. So again, I'm gonna pin so I know which seam yep. I'm sewing on. Yep. Right. Because if the phone rings or the dog barks, <laughs> you're right. gonna lose track. Right? Heaven forbid. Okay. And I'm just gonna take it nice and easy. I wanna make sure those seams line up. Yep. I wanna make sure that everything is beautiful. And then I am going to say to go ahead and press every step before you sew these together. I think it's just going to oh, work a yeah. little and easier for yeah, you. Yeah, and I love to use my little shovel iron, but mm -hmm. for this, I use my big press. Your big press. You wanted a, press a, good, a nice, good press, and I'm going to press this one open go for, for us. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, it really helps relieve that bulk. Mm-hmm. I love the little point on the shovel iron because you can get right there on it. Right there in the middle. Right there in the middle. So this is the other half. So now we're ready to put this side onto this side, right? Yep. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to line it up right here. I'm going to put in some pins. But look how perfectly they came yep. together. They're going to come together. Just you have to kind of trust the trust the pattern. Trust the process. Trust the process. Sometimes when I'm doing this, when I'm making my test black, I think, oh, and then it all works out in the end. Yeah. So it's all good. It is. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to sew these shapes together. And again, Erica, I think quilters think, ooh, this is a really complicated pattern. It has Y seams, but it, it has doesn't. none. No Y seams. If you can sew a good quarter inch seam allowance, that's really all you're going to need. Yes. The tricky parts are going to be keeping track of your pieces after that. You've got this. Yeah, you've and got And really, it. with just one block being 18 inches, this is a little, a cute little mini quilter wall hanging just on its own, right? Right, and it could be a medallion quilt. Oh, that's a great, I yes. mean, just really the beginning for a beautiful, mm -hmm. you could use the other pieces to create outer borders of that medallion. I can just see all different colorways There's a lot of ideas, yeah. I mean, if you're just doing one, make your test block in some fabric you like. As long as it goes together well, then you can just have your first piece already done. Right. Oh, there's a pin in there. Oh. I was like, why is this not opening? There you, you go. You can tell how often I use them. Okay, so That's why look. I'm here. I know. Keep the piece. All right, so Erica's going to give that a little press. I will. And then we're going to sew that last little bit. Okay. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Going to make our last little seam here. And you know what? We pressed opposite ways. You're going to be able to nest those seams. I love it. 
I love it. I have never made this with anything but a die. Have you know, you, I have not. I have not. I feel like this is one that you would use for sure paper templates. Yes. Right? Yes. Which well, are never I, really accurate. Actually, I did cut this and sew this together once out of paper templates. Oh, yes, because you one did the block. test die for it. I wouldn't do it again. Yeah. So there are a lot of seams in here. Be sure you're giving it a really good press. So once mm -hmm. your top is done, be sure you give it another really good press all together. And you could do it with all different colors. Think about it with like yes. a lime green or a hot pink or a purple in the yes. center there. Well, you could do all sorts of fun things. You could do neutral colors. Okay. Look at this. Perfect. I took one of my C's. Look at this. So here's our right side. And our, and our left side, we've got one whole corner unit done. Yep. So basically, you're going to create four identical units right. just like this. Sew those together. Now, for the, the project behind us, add a little sashing, and you're going to be done. Yes. Finish off with your binding, and your quilt is complete. Quilters, we know you're going to enjoy working with this great new die. And again, make sure you share pictures oh, on social media. We want to see the colorways that you choose. That is right, because at AccuQuilt, we want to help you cut time. So you can quilt more.